so visual representation, I don't want to minimize that. That is really important. And it is important that brands are cluing into that and starting to become more aware of how to include disability representation into their media and their marketing. However, that needs to be backed up with an actual willingness to provide those accommodations or support. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so excited to have you here today. We are going to be talking about performative allyship. If you've been with me for a while, or if you're relatively new here, you may be feeling like, why do you keep tossing out all of these new terms and topics? Honestly, I'm a little bit worried that at some point I'm going to run out of content to create because we do this weekly and it's, it's a stretch for me to be like, how do we talk about this from a different angle or in a different way or a different, but we haven't done that yet. And I've been doing this for over two years now. So it makes me think, we're not actually ever going to get to that point because this is not a static topic. Humanity is not a static topic, which is really at the base of a lot of what we're talking about is humanity and belonging. That comes out specifically within themes of disability and disability integration within our world and our workplaces. So the likelihood, honestly, of running out of content is very, very slim. But creating that in a way that is interesting and engaging each week really is through the lens of what is something that I learned this week or that I'm thinking about, how can I share that with you? So all that to say, that was a little bit rambly. Today probably will be because my brain has been in a lot of different places today and talking to different people. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a little jazzed up. Also jazzed up because I got to go see Trevor Noah live last night, which for all of my haters from the Shane Gillis monologue response video, if you haven't seen that, that was our most viewed video to date. And the biggest complaint that people had when they watched that was that I liked Trevor Noah. So that's fine. I feel confident in my liking of him. He's on the very short list of celebrities that I would like to date list. And maybe after last night has become the list. But so much of what he said and was talking about was centered around themes of humanity and what does it look like to hold the oftentimes the paradoxes of humanity the joy along with the grief how do you celebrate something when you know that sad and hard and death is is part of life like a, a lot of these just moments where where nothing is really isolated down to just one thing or one person and anyways <laughs> I'm not gonna go into all of that. That's not what today was intended to be, but that fired me up last night and then led a workshop today and that fired me up, that energized me. So, hey, we're here, we're here. How are you and how are you feeling today? So we're gonna dive in, longest intro ever. Thanks for sticking around, let's go. Performative allyship, why are we talking about it? What initiated this topic for me? It was seeing on Instagram a reel where a disabled woman was talking about how Nike has started using disabled mannequins in their product and like product placement and branding. So showing a mannequin that has one leg instead of two legs and then showing that mannequin dressed you know, with maybe the shorts and one sneaker. And the, the person who was reacting to that is disabled and has one leg. And so she said that she reached out to Nike and asked if because she has one leg and only needs one shoe, can she just buy one shoe? And the answer was no. You have to buy both shoes. They don't sell them 
individually. Dear Nike, is it possible to buy just one shoe because I only have one foot? Two friends recently sent me photos of mannequins in Nike stores with running blades, and I thought this was awesome. But then I asked Nike the obvious question. You can pause to read the full conversation, but here are the highlights. The answer was no. They offered a one-time 10% discount, which I said was very kind, but next time I buy running shoes, I'm still only going to have one foot, so it's not really a solution. They upped it to 15%, which I declined, and they then promised to take the issue to their higher-ups. It's been nine days, and I still haven't heard from Nike. However, I did discover that other sports brands are also using Blade Runners to sell their shoes, so I asked them if they sold shoes as singles. Again, the answer was no. Now, I love that companies are using amputee mannequins, but if you are going to use the image, you have to back it up in the way that you do business. Please share your thoughts in the comments. So then that led into a discussion of what is performative allyship. And I'm going to read a definition that kind of sum, sums it all up, and then we're going to break it down into some more specifics. Performative allyship is when an organization appears to support marginalized groups without actually doing so. It's also known as virtue signaling. Performative allies share knowledge about inequity, but don't use their privilege and resources to make real change. Their only allies in name and their support of a marginalized group is often just when it's convenient for them. This example of Nike and the shoes is a good example where they're showing in their brand what appears to be an accommodation or an understanding or at least visual representation of disability, in this case, a physical disability. But when it comes down to it, a person who may have the physical disability that's being put on, that's being, that's in the spotlight, they're still not in a place where that truly benefits them, right? Like if you have to buy two shoes and you're only ever going to use one, what's the point of having the mannequin on display that shows only one shoe? The business isn't actually following through with practical applications of what that allyship looks like. In that case, it really becomes a question of, is this just for show? which seems like it probably is, there is benefit to having visual representation because that's something that oftentimes is missing from our media, from our marketing, from the movies that we see, even from the books that we get to read, from art, etc. So visual representation, I don't want to minimize that. That is really important. And it is important that brands are cluing into that and starting to become more aware of how to include disability representation into their media and their marketing. However, that needs to be backed up with an actual willingness to provide those accommodations or support. It doesn't really do someone a whole lot of good if when it comes down to receiving the support that they need is met with a, no, sorry, that's not our policy, when it looks like from the outside that that is the policy or that that should be understood to be the norm. So what are some other areas where we may see this? I would love, this is gonna be your call to action for this week, if you have other examples or instances that you know of or that are in your mind, please drop those down in the comments below and share that with this community so that we can have a broader understanding. But the other one that I wanted to approach today was how a lot of businesses and organizations will use, and this is specific to disability. Should have said this earlier, but I didn't. But we're talking about disability as the marginalized group in this instance where performative allyship may apply. But as you know, disability is not the only marginalized group. So this is, you're going to see these trends or themes in other areas as well. We're just talking about one group of people in our examples today. But another area where I do see this and where it specifically came to mind over the past several weeks is because April is Autism Awareness Month. And so a lot of times, and, and that's Autism Awareness Month is not the only disability awareness month. There is a different awareness month for almost every month of the year. In some months they double up and there's multiple. But a lot of times you'll see businesses and organizations choose to highlight or draw awareness for those specific months 
but then they're not actually incorporating changes or practices into the rest of their year or into additional structure. So it could be that we attended a workshop during Autism Awareness Month and that's our, that's kind of our box that we checked, but we're not actually gonna support autism, understanding, awareness, employment, et cetera, during any of the rest of our months. That's the one example I'm using because that, that's, that's the one that just happened. I did see also on Instagram someone suggesting that instead of people posting on their business Instagrams about Autism Awareness Month, what would it look like for those businesses to actually be audited to see just how aware and accepting and inclusive they were to people with autism? I don't think that's a bad idea. I think great. I'm not exactly sure who's going to be doing all of those audits, but I think the concept in general is a good one because that shows a level of accountability of, but are you actually doing the work? Are you actually backing up the words that you're saying, the branding that you're putting out, the messaging that you're putting out, or is it a way for you to publicly proclaim something without actually having to do the work of internal and structural change, which takes quite a bit more time. And honestly, most of that is going to happen outside of public view. Even if you're a public facing business, we're a public facing business. We have people, we have the general public in here every day, right? So there are things that some people are going to be aware of and they're going to see in their experience when they're in our space. We also talk about what we're doing a lot, but I'm really only talking about it after we've already been learning it and practicing it and implementing it. I'm trying to be better about sometimes talking about things more on the front end instead of the back end so that you get to be a part of the whole process with us. But that talking about it is just one small aspect of the overall process. And a lot of the work and the conversations and the growing and the learning that we're doing is in the day-to-day and the being curious, the being observant, the being perceptive, the being willing to listen to disabled voices both on my team and outside of my team, being willing to challenge things, to have conversations with my team when someone disabled or not on my team comes up and says, a guest said this today and it really like doesn't sit well with me. And then we talk it out. We're like, okay, what's that making us feel? How are our bodies (laughs) feeling? Are you okay? What support do you need? What kind of bias do we think was present in what they said? Are there different ways to understand or interpret this? How in the future, like it caught us guard off today. We didn't know what to say. So in the future, what's a response that we could have? How do we want to take a stand as a company when things like that are said? Like there's all this work that's happening. And then at the very end of it, we might, and it probably isn't immediate, come back on to to Instagram or to YouTube and say, here's a term to (laughs) avoid. That's coming out of, here's all this like wrestling and real lived experience and human beings and feelings and ideas and perspectives that are being shared. And that's manifesting or growing into these opportunities of actually being able to speak it out. But there's something to back it. So being aware of those differences and something that you can do as a consumer of many different businesses and vendors is to ask questions, to do some of that digging. You see something, you see the Nike mannequin that has one leg and you ask someone at the store, if I were to only need one shoe, could I buy just one shoe? And then see what someone says. Like that answer doesn't seem satisfactory to me. Can we, can we flag that up a little bit? Actually like doing some of the work or the research around the curiosity or the observations that you may be having. And that's part of that accountability process too, is actually asking questions and then being willing to push back on things. Always encouraged with gentleness and respect, but be willing to push back on things and ask some questions and be willing to do better and be willing to ask other people to do better too. That's it for today. Again, if you have other examples that you would like to share, please drop that in the comments below. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I was trying to think if there's anything else, but I don't think so. It's been great. Hang in. See you next week. Sage and S team, your keyword this week is lavender. In my workshop today, part of the workshop was talking about disability as being an identifier, but not an exclusive identifier. And so to broaden that, then we talked about other identifiers and I asked the group to use me as an example. So I was like, what are some things just in this short period of time of getting to know me in this workshop, do you know about me? that you could use to identify me. And several 
people said she loves plants. <laughs> that made me really happy that in the like 15 minutes I'd spent with them, that was already one of the things that people noticed.